Well, this ought to be a fun one. <laughs> this is an, uh, another request from uh, Death Metal Elitist. <clears throat> he asked me if I would do the 2009 Dutch horror film, The Human Centipede. Now, the thing about The Human Centipede, it, it came out in 2009. Of course, you know, came out by IFC, so it's an independent film. Didn't really start kicking around any kind of buzz till about 2011 or so. That was at least when I heard of it. That was when I was seeing, you know, people on Facebook talking about it everywhere. Um, that was, I believe, when actually it would have been 2012, season 15, when South Park did the Human Centipede um, parody. But, it actually, and then it was 2011, I think it was, when the sequel came out. And the thing about Human Centipede is, yeah, when it came out, and a couple of years after, it was known to be, like, one of the sickest, nastiest, disturbing, gross-out horror films ever made. At least, that's that was the impression I was getting from people. Now, my experience with Human Centipede was incredibly watered down. Because of the insane hype around it, I had already seen South Park's parody. I had already seen Human Centipede 2, because a good friend of mine, who I was living with at the, at the time, the girlfriend he had at the time, who was living there as well, she had horror movies. And she had already seen this. So she went out and she bought the sequel. And me, thinking how different can it be, I watched the second one. And the second one is insane. Like that one is... Other than movies like, you know, August Underground, the Lucifer Valentine, Vomit Gore trilogy and stuff like that. As far as like movies, Human Centipede 2 is up there with like Serbian film and like Snuff 102 and stuff like that for just being depraved and fucked up. So by the time I saw this, because this is incredibly tame, comparatively speaking. I mean, its reputation does precede it. Like, yeah, you do have people being so ass to mouth. And the fact it's a horror movie. I mean, if people were being so ass to mouth in a comedy, it could go in different directions. Ass to mouth in a horror film, you know, who the hell, how. This is one way it could go, and Human Centipede 2 is the other way it could go. This is all mainly heavy implication. And the story is simple. You have these two. Um, American girls who were in Germany for some reason, or Denmark. It's a Dutch film, but you know, the character's German. They're over in Europe for whatever reason, these like nightclub kind of, you know, like they, when they walk, they like hold, hold their purses like this and their heels and. They're always just like, oh my god, like, like, seriously? Oh. So seeing them get what they get, this is kind of fun, but <laughs> that's just me being cynical. They get car problems. It's out in the rain. They go to the nearest house to seek help. And there's this doctor named Joseph. Heiter, played by uh, Dieter Laser. Laser. Probably pronouncing it wrong. He's a German actor. I mean, this guy, some parts, yeah, he overacts, but other times he looks like a fucking German psycho. He drugs them. When they wake up, they're in hospital beds. There's this other guy, but he ends up killing him because his body type is different. Apparently, he was 
a you know esteemed doctor of separating Siamese twins. Now he's retired, but he has this dream of assembling three people, ass to mouth, create one digested tract to create a human centipede. The replacement is an Asian fellow who he puts in the front. He talks about how he did it with Rottweilers to start with. And he hates human beings. He feels no connection with human beings. So he creates this grotesque kind of creature. I mean, this cover kind of sets it up. Or sets the tone. I mean, you know something horrific is going on here. But you can't really see it. Like, the... The whole first act of the film is setting it up. By the middle, it is also incredibly slow. You know, he he cuts the uh, uh, ligaments in the knees so they're paralyzed from the knees down. Cuts out, uh, pulls out certain teeth. Cuts ass cheek flaps and cheek flaps so that, you know, it's got like this sort of V. And... Then throughout a lot of it, he's trying to train the damn thing. You know, treating it like a dog. At, at one point, you know, he try, he gives the Asian guy a newspaper in his mouth to try to get him to come to him. It's not bloody, and even the, the surgery is kind of tame. You know, it's, it is kind of amazing that this movie has the reputation it does. It is probably because it's the whole mouth to anus thing. I mean, you would expect at some point what happens when someone has to shit. There is one scene in here, but the way it's handled, like there's no sound, there's no fart, like there's no fart sounds. You don't see fecal matter. It's all done, you know, like the guy does say, I. In, in Japanese or Chinese, he says, I have to shit. You kind of see him, kind of like his stomach and her facial reaction, getting shit in her mouth. But that's really it. It's just really one of those, what, what you do in your own mind is probably worse than what you're seeing. This one I did have to rewatch again because even though it's that simple, I did. It is kind of forgettable, and also the whole one hundred percent medically accurate. I don't know how how accurate it is. I mean, I'm sure to a certain extent it is. I think that is might be part of the marketing, because you know, human centipede. First sequence. Two, um, final sequence or full sequence. Yeah, full sequence. That says one hundred percent medically inaccurate because that's like a backyard movie. I will do the sequel at some point. That one I don't really have to rewatch because I used to watch it a lot. Because I, I used to really like it. I used to be into a phase where I could. I was just obsessed with getting the most fucked up shit I could find. You know. Not to sound pretentious, but you know, I do kind of look for quality films now. You know, that's why I've been wanting to do like Universal Monster films. Because I think they're classics. But yeah, Human Centipede, it's kind of a phase... That I went through, like, to find fucked up shit. And, believe it or not, uh, writer and director Tom Six had a hard time selling this concept. Um, apparently, apparently the idea came from a conversation he was having with someone about uh, pedophiles and sex offenders. What a proper punishment would be 
and he said just taking the prisoners and sewing them ass to mouth. Now, whether this was the best way he could tra translate it from idea to script to film, or if the whole trilogy to eventually get to a prison was his whole plan, I don't know. I hate Human Centipede 3. I I waited a while for that to come out, and it's, it's a piece of shit. I mean... Not that these are high art, but you know, it's a it's a bad movie. I thought it was disappointing. You know, Tom Six kept saying, you know, this is gonna be the worst one and it's gonna upset a lot of people. I mean he was being vague, maybe it would upset a lot of people because they wanted to see how it could possibly top two, which he couldn't. And I just thought three was a bad movie. I don't own it. I'm not watching it again. Don't feel like I need to. But I I will do Human Centipede 2 at some point. Perhaps the funniest thing about the whole Human Centipede, or at least the first one. Because usually when people talk about Human Centipede, they're talking about the first one. I don't think too many people kept going to the sequels. Which even... Roger Ebert, of all people. Roger fucking Ebert. Depraved and disgusting enough to satisfy the most demanding midnight movie fan. Roger Ebert is the same critic that called Friday the 13th trash. He called it trash, vile garbage. Which, and there's a number of critics that are saying that. Why is it 30 years ago... Friday the 13th, or The Burning, Maniac. These are all movies that are garbage, they're depraved. Which, yeah, Maniac is pretty twisted for back then, so so let's look at Friday the 13th. Someone gets stabbed, someone gets their throat slit, someone gets an axe to the head. You get great blood and gore effects. That's trash and garbage. But movies like Martyrs or a Serbian film, you know, where the shit in that movie happens, or Human Centipede, where people are sewn ass to mouth, that's called artistic horror. Like, Friday the 13th, a killer on the loose killing teenagers who are, who have poor moral values, that's trash. But people being sewn ass to mouth. And shitting in each other's mouths for one digestive tract. That's art. I don't know what happened to horror. The whole artistic horror movement, I kind of thought was bullshit anyway. Because there's nothing more artistic. You know, it's all movies. One isn't any more artistic than the other. If you want to be more artistic for me, play with the conventions of filmmaking. I mean... It's not really a horror film, it's still rape revenge, but uh, Gaspar Noe's Irreversible. That's artistic. A rape revenge film that's chopped up into 13 bits, put in reverse chronological order, where the camera's going like this for the whole opening and everything in the film, and then like at, as the movie goes, it gets like steadier and steadier. And then eventually, during the rape scene, it just stops. So yeah, the whole artistic horror movement, I don't fucking get. This movie was a huge letdown, again, because I did see the South Park parody, and I did see the sequel before this. I mean, it's definitely original. <laughs> I gotta give it that. It's a horror movie about... I mean, we've seen mad doctor movies. How many Frankenstein films? Reanimator. Now, a German dude that wants to sew people ass to mouth. So yeah, this was for Death Metal Elitist. Uh, I don't know if he loves this film. I don't know if he just wants me to do, like, once he likes, or, you know, 
Like, if he thinks the more fucked up they are, the better horror movies they are. I don't know. Um, he only asked me to do this one. Uh, maybe I'll do the sequel sooner than later j just to get it done. I do like the sequel. I'll say that. Because, yeah, it does go fucking all out. It is. It does have a surreal quality to it, kind of like a racer head. I'll save it for that review. But anyway, Death Metal Elitist. There's my review for Human Centipede. Everyone else, hope you enjoyed. Thank you.